Welcome back guys. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 4.3 reciprocal graphs. 4.3 represents chapter 4, section 3 of the Pearson A-Level Maths, Pure Maths, Year 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts for this particular section. Consider the following function. f of x is equal to k over x. We're going to look at two scenarios. The first scenario, when k is greater than 0. The second scenario, when k is less than 0. So k is greater than 0 is essentially the numerator being positive. k is less than 0 is essentially the numerator being negative. OK, so let's look at k is greater than 0. What will the graph look like? Well, it will look something like this. So I've got my coordinate grid, y and x-axis. This is the shape of the graph. OK, let's move on to k is less than 0. In other words, when the numerator is a negative. Now, what will the graph look like for this case? Well, it's just going to flip over like that. So here is the shape of the graph. So I've got my x and y axis, and this is what the graph looks like. Notice that the y and the x axis in both cases represent lines that the graph approaches but never reaches. So these two lines have special names. In this case, it is called the asymptote. So what is an asymptote? What is the formal definition? Asymptote is a line that the graph approaches but never reaches. Okay, so that there's a formal definition. So if we go back to this graph over here, we know that the y and the x-axis are the asymptotes. The equation of the y-axis is essentially x equals 0. So that there is my first asymptote. The equation of the x-axis is essentially y equals 0. So that there is my second asymptote. The same applies with this particular graph. You've got x equals 0 and y equals 0 being asymptotes. OK, now we're going to look at a different function, which is also a reciprocal function. So consider g of x is equal to k over x squared. So k over x squared. There are two scenarios. The first scenario, when k is greater than 0, and the second scenario, when k is less than 0. OK, let's have a look at the first scenario. k is greater than 0, that is when the numerator is positive. What will the graph look like? Well, it will look something like this. So I've got my y-axis and my x-axis. Let's sketch the graph. OK, so in this scenario, the graph will take the following shape. as you can see. Okay, now let's look at k is less than zero. Well, when k is less than zero, in other words, when the numerator is negative, these two curves get flipped downwards like that. So the shape of the graph would be as follows. So I've got my y-axis and I've got my x-axis. These two curves get flipped downwards. So it looks something like this. Okay. Now, let's identify the asymptotes. In both cases, we see that the curve approaches but never reaches the y or the x-axis. So the y and the x-axis, again, are the asymptotes. So over here, we've got the y-axis. The equation of the y-axis is x equals 0. That's my first asymptote. Um, the equation of the x-axis is y equals 0. My second asymptote, the same applies over here. So we have x equals 0 and y equal 0. So that there, ladies and gents, is the key facts for this particular section. We're going to be using these key facts to sketch reciprocal graphs. Let's have a look at example 1. Sketch on the same diagram, part A, B, C and D. Let's start off with part A. We've got y equal 4 over x and y equal 12 over x. Here's my coordinate grid. x and y axis. Let's start off by sketching y equal 4 over x. The numerator is positive, so it's going to take this shape over here. So here is 4 over x. 
Now we're going to sketch y equal 12 over x. The numerator is positive, so it will take on this shape here. However, notice that the numerator over here is 12, which is larger than the numerator over here, which is 4. So how will the graph over here differ from this graph? Well, it will be further away from the origin. So 12 over x will look something like this. As you can see, it's further away from the origin. As the numerator increases, the graph gets further away from the origin. So we have y equal 4 over x and y equal 12 over x. Let's move on to the next part of the question, part b. y equal minus 1 over x. Notice that the numerator is negative 1, so the graph will take on this shape. Uh, we're going to be sketching this and this on the same coordinate grid. So here's my coordinate grid. x-axis, y-axis. Let's start off with y equal minus 1 over x. Here's the shape of the graph. The next graph is y equal minus 3 over x. Notice that minus 3 is smaller than minus 1. So what will happen to the graph in this case? Well, it will be more further away from the origin in comparison to the graph of this particular function. So I'm going to sketch minus 3 over x so that the curve is more further away from the origin in comparison to these two curves. So this is what my graph looks like. So I've got y equal minus 1 over x and I've got y equal minus 3 over x. Moving on to part c, y equal 4 over x squared and y equal 10 over x squared. Notice that we have x squared in the denominator, so we're looking at this particular function. And over here, 4 and 10, if you were to sketch the two graphs on the same coordinate grid, you have to sketch it in such a way that the curves for this graph is more further away from the origin in comparison to the curves for this graph. Okay, in both cases, the numerator is positive, so the graph will take on this shape. Here is my coordinate grid. Let's start off with y equal 4 over x squared. This is the shape that the graph takes. So it's a sketch, it's not accurate, so don't worry, as long as you get the shape correct, that is the key. Uh, notice that in each case, the curves are not cutting the axes, because the axes represent asymptotes. Okay, so we've got y equal 4 over x squared. Now y equal 10 over x squared will have the same shape, but the curves will be further away from the origin. So here is 10 over x squared. Okay, there you go. So we've got y equal 4 over x squared, and we've got y equal 10 over x squared. Okay, on to the last one. We're going to sketch these two graphs on the same coordinate grid. Notice that the numerators are negative, so the shape of these two graphs will be this shape here. But minus 3 is smaller than minus 1, so the curves for this graph will be more further away from the origin in comparison to the curves for this particular graph. So here is my coordinate grid, x and y-axis. Let's start off with minus 1 over x squared. This is the shape that the graph takes. Okay, now we're going to sketch minus 3 over x squared on the same coordinate grid. The curves for this graph must be further away from the origin. So this is what we have. Okay, so y equal minus 1 over x squared and y equal minus 3 over x squared. So in each case, we have asymptotes. The asymptotes are the y and x-axis. Right, so I'm going to write down the equation of the asymptotes. Over here we have x equals 0, y equals 0. And that applies to all the other graphs. So x equals 0, y equals 0, x equals 0, y equals 0, x equals 0, and y equals 0. Let's have a look at example 2. Sketch the following, part A and B. Now A and B represent reciprocal functions transformed. 
the asymptotes have been shifted. In the examination, you could be asked to sketch these type of graphs. Let's start off with part A. The very first step is to identify the asymptotes. So asymptotes. To work out the x asymptote, you need to set the denominator equal to zero. So we have x minus one is equal to zero. We now solve this and we get x equal one. So that there's my x asymptote. To work out the y asymptote, you look at the outer number. So in this case, it is positive three. So the y asymptote is y equal three. We've got the asymptotes. Let's work out the x and y intercept. Starting off with the y-intercept. Now to find the y-intercept, we need to substitute x equal 0. So substitute x equal 0. We are going to replace the x with 0 in this equation. This gives us y equal 2 of a negative 1, which is minus 2, plus 3, which is 1. So my y-intercept is 0, 1. Let's work out the x-intercept. So for the x-intercept, we need to substitute y equal 0. So substitute y equal 0. We replace the y with 0. So if I do this, I get 0 is equal to 2 over x minus 1 plus 3. I can take the positive 3 to the left-hand side. This gives me minus 3 is equal to 2 over x minus 1. Rearrange and make x the subject. So if I take the x minus 1 to the left-hand side and I multiply it with a minus 3, I get minus 3x plus 3 equal 2. Right, so minus 3x is equal to 2 take away 3, which is minus 1. Hence, x is equal a third. So my x-intercept is going to be a third, zero. Now I'm going to sketch the graph. So here's my coordinate grid. I'll start off by labelling the asymptotes. So I've got x equal 1. And I've got y equal 3. Notice that the k is 2, which is greater than 0, hence this is the shape of the graph. So I'll sketch that shape in. Here is my first curve. Remember, these two are asymptotes, so the curve does not reach the asymptotes. Then I sketch in my second curve, which will be over here, like that. Again, these two are asymptotes. The curve does not reach the asymptotes. Now, to put the icing on the cake, I need to label the graph, and I also need to label the intercepts. So my y-intercept is 0, 1, so I can just label 1 here. And my x-intercept is a third, 0. So I can label a third over here. And this here represents the graph y equal 2 over x minus 1 plus 3. So that there is my complete sketch. Let's move on to part b. We are now going to sketch this graph. Let's start off by finding the asymptotes. Like I did before, to find the x asymptote, I need to set the denominator equal to 0. So x plus 1 equal to 0. Solve the equation, you get x equal minus 1. The y asymptote is the outer number. So minus 4. y equal minus 4. Now I'm going to go ahead and work out the y and x intercept. So y intercept. Substitute x equals 0. So if I replace x with 0, I get minus 4 minus 3 over 1. So that's minus 4 minus 3, which is 
minus 7. So the y-intercept is 0 minus 7. Now I'm going to go ahead and work out the x-intercept. Substitute y equals 0. So replace the y with 0. I've got 0 equal minus 4 minus 3 over x plus 1. Take the minus 4 to the left-hand side. So that's 4 equal minus 3 over x plus 1. Take the x plus 1 to the left-hand side, multiply out with the 4. This gives me 4x plus 4 is equal to minus 3. Okay, so now I'm going to rearrange. 4x is equal to minus 7, hence x is equal to minus 7 over 4. So my x-intercept is minus 7 over 4, 0. Right, so I've got my asymptote, I've got my y-intercept, I've got my x-intercept. Now if I go back to the equation, notice that in the numerator we have minus 3. That's a negative constant. The k is negative. So when k is less than 0, this is the shape of the graph. So I'm going to sketch in that shape. Here is my coordinate grid. Let's start off by labelling the asymptotes. We've got x equal minus 1. And we've got y equal minus 4. Remember, it's not to scale, it is a sketch. Okay, so now I'm going to sketch in these two curves. So here is my first curve. And here is my second curve. We can label the x and y intercept. So this x intercept is minus 7 over 4, 0. So I can label it as minus 7 over 4. And this y-intercept is 0, minus 7. So I can label it as minus 7. To put the icing on the cake, we know that this graph represents the equation y equal minus 4 minus 3 over x plus 1. So that there completes example 2. So essentially, when you have these type of reciprocal function, which is a transformation of the original reciprocal function, here is the step-by-step -step process. Work out the asymptotes, work out the y-intercept, work out the x-intercept, identify the shape of the graph, which is dependent on the numerator. Is it positive or negative? If it's positive, this is the shape of the graph. If it's negative, this is the shape of the graph. Once you've got all of that information, then you can go ahead and simply sketch the graph. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on the notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post teaching videos.